Hey, Tom here from the Run Testers. In this video, we are going to be talking about running shoe rotations. Now, we're not actually going to be giving you our running shoe rotations. We're going to be talking through what a running shoe rotation is, why you might have one, if you need one, what the benefits are, all those sorts of things. Now, this video is also part of the podcast. So if you're planning on listening to the podcast, maybe don't watch this video because it's all on there as well. But there's a lot of other stuff on the podcast as well, like the most up-to-date running news, products that are out, and we do a Q&A on there as well. Right, let's jump in and see what we said about energy rotations. <laughs> So guys, rotations, running shoe rotations, something that crops up a lot in the comments, something that we discuss quite a lot and something that is possibly a quite a tricky one for a lot of people to get their heads around if they maybe are new to running or if they yeah, haven't owned that many shoes before. Um, so what? let's start off with a nice simple one. What is a running shoe rotation? Nick, you start this one because you talk about running shoe, shoe, shoe rotations more than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> quivers, if you will. Um, Recording this video, quivers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> quivers, quavers? quivers, quivers, and quavers. Uh, so, running shoe rotation is basically using a mix of running shoes uh, each week. So, you know, when you first start running, you probably start with one shoe. You do everything, all of your runs in that one shoe. Whereas with a running shoe rotation, you'd have a variety. So, it can be as little as two shoes. Three shoes is probably the most common running shoe rotation, like a, a race shoe, a daily trainer, and a cushion shoe, that kind of thing. Or you can then start really extending it to adding in fourth shoes for niche purposes, trail shoes, all that kind of thing. So the idea is you're using different shoes for different runs. All right, so let's, let's keep this one. Uh, this, this, this was a good one. What are the benefits of having a running shoe rotation? All right, so I think I've done, I, I've talked about this a lot. I've just done an article on this, spoken to some people about it, but uh, there's kind of different benefits. I mean, the most obvious one to runners is that different shoes serve different purposes a little bit better. So while there are all rounder shoes out there that are great at doing everything, but a lot of time you want a dedicated racing shoe that's a bit lighter, a bit faster, uh, but it might not be as comfortable as you want it for your easy run. So you can have different shoes to do suit different purposes. It's also good for the body. So this is something that comes up a lot when I speak to physios through my normal job. Um, one of their main recommendations for runners is to have different running shoes, and it's not for performance benefits. It's because it places different stresses on the body to run in different types of shoes, particularly if you go for different brands, different drops, different foam types, that kind of thing just means that maybe having a nice firm shoe with a lower drop in your rotation alongside your big squishy high drop shoe just means your body is receiving the impact from running in a slightly different way. Your muscles get a slightly different force applied to them. And it, given that most running injuries tend towards being repetitive strain injuries, you know, overuse injuries, doing that, using different shoes might mean that you reduce your risk slightly of getting those repetitive injuries. And then the last benefit I've come across recently is uh, it's good for the shoes. So all of these shoes these days have, you know, nice soft midsole foams in them. A lot of them have air injected midsoles or nitrogen injected midsoles. And after a run, they basically are compressed during a run. It takes a little while for them to you know, expand again. And it's not a long time, but it just means if you're not using them again the very next day, you just give your shoe a bit more time to recover in between use and be at its best. The next time you use it, it's going to feel a bit better. And especially in case you're actually getting your shoes wet and you need to give them time to dry out, uh, just moving, uh, using a different shoe the next day might just mean that shoe you used has a bit more time to recover and feel fresher and better the next time you do come to using it. And it's not going to shorten the lifespan of your shoes, definitely. So even though it's expensive up front, you know, you will have three shoes that still last the same amount of time and, you know, you can just use, and it's not going to cost you anything extra as opposed to just buying one shoe. It might, in fact, even save you a bit of money because your shoes might last a bit longer because you're not battering them every day. Interesting. Can you think of any <laughs> other benefits, Mike? I mean, I think Nick kind of quite comprehensively covered it, but I think um, I, I think for I think for me, I think it's just um, this kind of set, getting the most out of the kind of sessions that you want to do in that in in that training, or if you are training for something. I think having a shoe that will lend itself better to those types of, of, of sessions, I think it makes sense, and that's kind of why you know I like probably fall into a lot of the back of a lot of runners where actually I'd want a shoe that I can use for everything, but ultimately you know, in a fortunate position where I can dedicate a shoe to a different kind of session or a different type of run. And I think, you know, I've, I've seen value in having a rotation, uh, whereas previously, I, you know, I wasn't particularly sure that I needed it. But I do think that it has helped me in terms of 
being more focused in terms of trying to sessions that I do in the particular in the particular shoes and getting the most out of those sessions as well. Yeah, I also would say it's pretty important to say that the benefits are probably quite marginal. Like it's not something that you drastically have to do. But like for example, Kieran ran the same pair of shoes all you know all the way across Europe, and the shoe was fine. It's not like you needed that foam to recover every day. But mm. given it's just an initial outlay is quite scary. It's a big amount of money up front, but in theory, it shouldn't really cost you anything extra to have the rotation. And then, like Mike says, you can have the perfect shoe for the job um, when it comes to fast runs in particular for me. Okay, so does everyone need a running shoe rotation? I don't think so. Okay, next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, didn't want, I didn't want to keep hogging the question. I don't know if Mike wanted to jump uh, in. But. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, no, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't think necessarily. I think it depends on what you're doing in terms of your runs. And I think, like, f- for me, if if I want to go out and and do a qu- quicker session, but I can use that shoe or the same shoe to kind of race in, then I think that's absolutely fine. I don't think that's an issue. And if you're getting a good, you know, the good life out of it, and it feels familiar, and you like that familiarity of running in that shoe for all your sessions, and I think. For me personally, I think it's absolutely fine, but I do think also there is room to have those rotations, and I think catering those shoes for the different types of runs that you do, I think is absolutely an argument to do that. And Nick's kind of talked about the kind of the value of doing it in terms of the lifespan of your of your shoes as well, and spreading the shoes across your runs, which initially may not feel like it's you know a kind of a cheaper thing to do, but actually you don't have to spend a lot on the shoes that can cater for kind of those slower, easy runs and do those kind of quicker runs. And actually you can find things that work for races, but also work for your training as well. So I think you can build those rotations, I think also at a value, you know, a cheap kind of price point as well. And I think that's worth keeping in mind, but I also don't think it's for everyone. It depends on what you're using those shoes for, I think ultimately. And if, if you're going to do those types of runs and you're looking at those types of improving the quality of those runs or maybe getting more out of those runs and maybe there's an argument to do it. I think, you know, based on kind of my experience of having a rotation. Yeah, I will say when you first start out running and you're probably running every other day, fairly short distances, um, mm-hmm. and even if you are a performance-focused person, you don't really need to start thinking about that just yet. I would just get yeah, a nice, comfortable shoe and use it for a while because, it's, yeah, you're just getting used to the sport. I wouldn't invest in a rotation straight away. Certainly... I'd wait until you really know almost what the kind of shoes you like and what you're trying to do before you start adding other shoes to it. It's good just to get uh, a good general shoe at first. Yeah, completely. Uh, I I agree. I think uh, running shoe rotations are a thing that quite often people get into because they become get really into running and it almost becomes like a you know shopping uh, obsession and you you just want all the latest things. But uh, I mean, we've got a lot of shoes and um, (laughs) there's some shoes that I really wanted when I heard about them, but I never use. Mm. So yeah, ha- having a big pile of shoes is, is not great if you ne- if you never use them, yeah. and and really I I, th- I think that if uh, we we have a, we're, we've got a nice opportunity in that we get to try lots of shoes, but um, if you if push came to shove, I'd probably end up with you know a, a handful of shoes that I really want to run in, and all those other ones I don't really want, and and that's because we test shoes. But I've got friends who have massive piles of shoes as well, and they never use any of them mm. because they've been constantly trying to build out a rotation, buy new shoes all the time, but. Um, yeah, there's a sort of buyer's level of it as well, where uh, having a, a rotation can be a bit addictive and you can't adding, keep adding in new new bits and pieces to it. So, yeah, I don't think everyone needs one. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I think actually once you've got one shoe or even two, even if you do build a rotation of three shoes that you're happy with, I would immediately stop watching all running reviews. It's terrible for our channel, but yeah, I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't want to hear about any other shoes until I'd use those shoes up because, uh, yeah, like you say, it's just something distracting and shiny and then you've wasted money and you know, exactly. wasted and, emissions. <laughs> and, and quite often you'll find that, that a lot of, and, and this, I'm not speaking for myself here and because we test shoes, but I've got friends who have bought the Vaporfly, then bought the Alpha Fly, and now they're buying the Puma carbon plate shoes. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and they, they're constantly messaging you going, oh, I don't like it as much as the Vaporfly. Mm. Well, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. You've now you've now got seven calm plate shoes. <laughs> you only like the Vaporfly. It's it's you know you don't have to get all the shoes. And uh, yeah, it's it's a tricky one. But yeah, I think it's definitely there's a level of it which is um, it's enjoyable, isn't it, to to get new shoes and build yeah. out your rotation. But um, it's not necessary for everyone. Can only do so much running after all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so let's 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 talk about us in particular, and we will be having a video out soon where we talk about our, our, our actual rotations. And each of the run testers will be talking about the shoes that they that, that they would pick for their rotation of, of three. Um, but let's have a little chat. We're not going to go through the actual shoes now, but let's mm-hmm. talk about how each of you build out 
your running shoe rotations. Uh, Mike, do you want to start with your rotation? Yeah, I feel like my rotation has grown um, Where from where, for someone who literally just did run in one shoe. But I think what I found is, uh, for me personally, the way it's worked for me is I found a shoe that if I just want to go out and run, that is a shoe that I grab. There's no emphasis on you know me wanting to run quick. So that's kind of my easy, I guess, recovery shoe. Um, and that's kind of one I would have. Um, I would also something I, I also I do well when I'm not when I'm fit I will I do a lot of track sessions tracks are the track sessions are really important for me in terms of my training I do have a shoe that I kind of would go to to use in the track that I like using on the track which obviously could work for kind of speed training generally anywhere but I quite like having something for those kind of you know specific kind of um, kind of running conditions and running environment um, and then kind of a daily a daily trainer where I think it's something I can use to kind of run faster sessions in but if I want to go and run slower in it as well then I have the capacity to do that and I think that's a nice shoe to have if you decide you want to change in terms of what you're doing in that run then I think that's a nice shoe to kind of have and then the last thing is I probably would have my race shoe but it's a race shoe that I'd also use to train at my race pace as well so um, Mm. that is a carbon plate shoe that is something that I would use but it's something that I would only use for those quality runs where are going to kind of mirror reflect what I'm going to do in my kind of races and then the other thing I would have is a big kind of rotation is a trail shoe I mean I do like running trails I have to go and run to my trail so I do have a road to trail shoe that I will have um that I kind of use on a regular basis just because I have to go if I have to go and do kind of some trail stuff um a lot some of my club runs are then that's something that I would use as well. So my rotation has grown, uh, but ultimately um, there's probably a couple of shoes that I would regularly use. And I think the kind of faster kind of daily trainer and the kind of shoe that I would use for racing and kind of training at my race pace. All right, uh, Nick, your rotation, yours is probably slightly different than uh, than myself and Mike's. What have you got? Uh, yeah, it's probably pretty similar. I'd start with, yeah, I have a ratio, dedicated ratio. I'm very keen on running fast and doing time. So I will, that's been a big choice is the racing shoe, which I wouldn't use very much in training uh, because I, my, more of my more daily trainer general shoe, I pick something that's speed tilted, I'd say. So kind of the all rounder shoes you see these days that, you know, plated training shoes or even without a plate, very lightweight, quite good shoes for fast sessions. And I'd like to be able to use my trainer for that. So I'd have, yeah, the fast racing shoe and then a daily trainer that's pretty speedy. And then for my general shoe for easy runs, uh, relaxed runs, maybe some tempo runs, I would get a fairly cushioned shoe, uh, not too cushioned. I'm not so into the big max cushion trend. So I get something fairly cushioned. But the key thing for me with that shoe is definitely the outsole is going to be able to handle light trails. So the forest mm-hmm. near me, the canal toe pass near me, great place to go and do easy general runs so it's got to be it's not still a road shoe i want it, the feeling of a road shoe because a lot of those runs will be on the road as well but it's got to have a good outsole and then i suppose a last must for me would be uh, as i do race cross country with my club i'd have a a big mud focused trail shoe something with big lugs that i can then use as well when i go on holiday to areas with more um you know aggressive trails than i find around me so i want a shoe that's got really reliable grip that's a trail a trail only shoe that i'll use for those races club sessions in the mud and that kind of thing but for my most of my trail runs would just be on light trails i'd use a road shoe with a good outsole and that would be probably the the, the shoe that does most of my runs in general okay interesting so my, i i'm going to go for the full-on most maximum cushion shoe possible <laughs> it's my main uh, sort of easy day shoe but that's uh, my training skews very much at the moment skews very much towards just ticking off the miles in in comfort and so I would always have the most cushioned shoe possible for those those days, uh, and then my in my centre uh, my sort of middle rotation shoe would be a non carbon uh, shoe that skews more towards faster running. I don't like to have a carbon plate shoe as my daily shoe. Uh, I like to have something a bit more cushioning, but it's designed to be a little bit bouncier. And then my, uh, my for my race shoe, I would always go for you know top end carbon plate shoe, which I'm using <laughs> for. For, uh, for for fast sessions and uh, it's probably no surprises which ones those are going to be <laughs> and then for my if i was going to have a trail shoe in there it would be more like mike's it would be more of a road to trail shoe because most of the trail stuff that i do veers more towards the comfortable side of things i'm not running fast on the trails i'm not going through loads of mud so it tends to be uh, paths i run across the downs quite a lot and even though there are some tricky tr- section on the downs i tend to hit, stick to the paths so um generally want a shoe that i can run out to the downs on and that's about 5k uh, do like 20k on the downs and then and then run back uh so a nice comfortable road to trail shoe for me uh in that and also it's a shoe that 
I like I like to have that shoe as a, an option where I can like like you have Nick where you go away you can take a shoe and still do a bit of road running it you don't have to worry too much about um, being limited by that so uh, yeah that's that's my four shoe choice rotation uh, mm-hmm. and. Uh, as I say, uh, the up on the channel, we'll link to it uh, as soon as it's ready, but we will be going through our actual rotations at the moment. And they change quite a lot throughout the year, uh, yeah. with new shoes getting added, new shoes <laughs> getting removed. But I would say that for most of us, actually, Kieran's an interesting one, this, because Kieran's probably the one that's got the uh, rotation that's very different than ours, based on the type of running that he does. Changes a lot as well. Yeah. Um, but for yeah. for us, um, yeah, we, we I think the shoes that we generally always have a similar one from the same lineup in but then there's some some surprising ones that crop in every year that uh you couldn't have you couldn't have counted on that um suddenly suddenly take over the the shoes that we previously had in our rotation Hmm. um so there we go running shoe rotations that's it from us thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like subscribe click the bell anything like that and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got and also if you want to listen to the podcast version of this because there's loads of other stuff on there as well you can go to the caption below and Find it on the podcast provider of your choice. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.